Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everybody. Today, me and Roderick are going to be both reading a poem, and I will give Roderick some tips on how to read as correctly as possible a poem. Although personally, I feel she's already more than proficient, but hopefully, you know, some things will come out, and perhaps other people will learn some little tricks they haven't come up with yet. So, the poem we chose, yeah? Yeah, we just wanted to say thank you, Cordo. And I wanted to uh, explain the reasons a little bit to why this subject came up. And the thing is that I have read the poem and I showed it to my mom and she said the poem I have read is not felt by me properly and because I could not feel it properly uh, it did not sound genuine it sounds like a theater performance rather than a genuine uh, poem and the poem uh, was written by a young poet who was born during the First World War and then he went and served in the Second World War in Russia and finally he died during the Cold War. And the only thing motivated him through life is love, but duty would prevent all the thoughts of happiness somehow. So basically it's tragedy through and through. And me being uh, <laughs> light-hearted, let's say, um, I was not able to convey the message of the poem. So that's why uh, we would like to uh, show how to read a poem which is heartfelt by somebody going through the most difficult experience. Please, Nodrick, would you read us the version in English of that poem? Okay. So. A poem by Konstantin Simonov. Wait for me. Written in 1941 as he went to war. Wait for me and I'll come back. Wait with all you've got. Wait when dreary yellow rains tell you you should not. Wait when snow is falling fast. Wait when summer is hot. Wait when yesterdays are past and others have forgot. Wait from that far off place letters don't arrive. Wait when those with whom you wait doubt if I'm alive. Okay, we will take a break here. This is the first yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. So, one of my first pointers will be you have to picture yourself in his spot. You're living to a place far away where you know the people that you love won't know about you and you won't know about them. There is no communication, so you will not get any news from them from that point on. You also have to picture that you might not come back and yet you really want to grasp on the hope that you will come back so much 
that you want to convince it into reality. And mm-hmm. this, this is what you're trying to convey. You know, this concept that I'm facing that. I don't have news of the people I love. And no picture what it would be like to be far away from the people you love. And suddenly mm-hmm. be disconnected. And it's gonna hurt. So I know most of us try to avoid that thought because we don't like to think about being far away from the people we love. But yeah. that's that's the emotion you have to tap in. Mm-hmm. And the second thing is I know you enjoy reading and I know it surpasses you because you are a very mm-hmm. joyful person and happy. But behind you reading I can hear a sort of smile laughter and I think it's due to anxiety yeah. and nervosity from being on stage reading something so my advice for that is first of all close your eyes for a second yeah picture the situation you have that one time the occasion to write a letter to your beloved ones and it's the last time you can do it. And empty from yourself all that, you know, I know it's hard, but empty yourself from all that joyfulness and all that just picture how hard it is. And then breathe in and breathe out. And all that all that exterior stuff. Let, let it go out. Just keep that image within yourself. Let's say, let's say that you're saying that to your husband, or to your brother, or to your father, someone you truly love, and you're in a train station, and that's the last moment you have to write it. Now read it the way you would write it, for someone that matters to you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, let me try it. And don't forget, breathe in, breathe out before you read it. Take the time. Okay. Wait for me. And I'll come back. Wait with all you've got. Wait. When dreary yellow rains tell you you should not. Wait. When snow is falling fast. Wait when summer's hot. Wait. When yesterday is past. Others have forgot. Wait when from that far off place letters don't arrive. Wait when those with whom you wait doubt if I'm alive. Wait for me and I will come back. Wait in patience yet and they'll tell you all by heart that you should forget wait even when my dearest ones say that I'm lost even when my friends give up sit and count the coast drink a glass of bitter wine to the fallen friend Wait, and do not drink with them. Wait until the end. Wait for me, and I'll come back. Touching every fate. What a bit of luck, they'll say. Those that did not wait. They will never understand. How amidst the strife, 
are you waiting for me, dear? You have saved my life. How I made it, we shall know. Only you and I. You alone knew how to wait. We alone knew why. Very good. There you tap into the emotional background of the bar. That was an excellent emotional you know, pro projection of what you write. It was excellent, magnificent. Yeah, it's fucking heart raging. Oh yeah, it is. It, it, but that's the thing, it, it's supposed to be heart wrenching. I mean, mm -hmm. most people that listen to poetry don't realize it, but yeah. poems convey an emotion. And poems about that topic are extremely heavy. And reading them too lightly robs them of their nature, which is the hardship of it, the, the heaviness, the weight. That was charming. <laughs> I think we all had a good time. I hope you too. Great time. Thank you for all the pointers, Godel. Guys, please join Pinder Poet Society. Uh, like and subscribe uh, videos. And have a great day and feel lucky that you don't have to write that type of poem. Goodbye, everybody.